Hey guys, thanks for joining me on today's video. Barrett here with Spec of Tech. And today's video is something that I'm personally very excited for. A couple of months back, I had made a video about me building a reference system, but I hadn't told you guys which reference speakers I had chosen to help complete that reference system. But at the time of that video, the speakers were already ordered. I was just waiting for the uh, manufacturing process of those speakers to be completed. Well, they're finally here. And today we're gonna unbox and I'm gonna show you guys what I chose for my reference speakers. So the speakers that we're unboxing today, I've been saving for for quite some time. and I've been selling off a lot of equipment and a lot of other things to help pay for them. So I'm very, very excited to finally get these installed into my system. And I'm also very excited to share with you guys what I've decided to go with for my reference speakers, because like I said in the previous video about my reference system, that the whole purpose of this is so that I'm not constantly upgrading my system any any longer. Of course, I'm not gonna say never. There's still gonna be upgrades in the future, no question. But I just want some equipment that's gonna stick around in my system and be sort of a long-term stay as my reference. So a big part of why I wanted to build a reference system is so that I can provide uh, better reviews for you guys. So when I have these uh, reference sp speakers, which I'm going to tune as neutral as possible, it's just gonna have, uh, it's gonna give me a better baseline to draw from. So when I'm comparing uh, or not necessarily comparing other speakers to these, just hearing the differences of other speakers, it's going to help me provide you guys with more valid and uh, accurate information, whether or not the highs are a little bit brighter or whether the speaker is a little bit warm or cool or detailed mid-range or detailed uh, top end. These are going to be my reference that's going to help me draw from that uh, baseline information so that I can give you guys better, more accurate information that may help you with a buying decision for other speakers. All right, I think that's just about enough talking. So let me show you guys what I decided to go with for my reference speakers. So as you can see from the boxes here, I don't know if you can see from this angle, but it's all legacy gear. So I'm super excited to get into these boxes. I'm kind of just in my comfy clothes, so you guys are gonna have to excuse me, but I will really want to get into these boxes. I've been moving them around all day, but I did have a buddy Scott that helped me get them from outside into my theater room. So thank you, Scott. You saved me a lot of back pain and a lot of time. I really appreciate you coming down and helping me out. All right, so let's get into these boxes. I got a full seven speaker setup from Legacy. I'm just gonna start with the smaller boxes and then work my way up to the towers. But we're gonna try and get through this really quickly. But I do wanna show you guys what's all in the boxes and what's all included and how you unbox them. So let's get started. All right, so <clears throat> I'm gonna start with the smallest box here first. I believe these are going to be my side surrounds. Some interesting styrofoam. This is like building styrofoam, but it's very solid. So it should keep it well protected. Uh, oh, these are uh, screws and and wall anchors in case you want to mount them on the wall because these are, these are a wall speaker, but I won't be putting them on the wall. So very well packaged, a lot of styrofoam. Uh, and then it's in a plastic bag as well. So in case you haven't guessed it already, uh, these are the Legacy Pixel Pro, which I'm gonna be using for my side surrounds. And the reason I wanted to go with these is because they're very shallow, and I have a shelf off to the side there that's a very shallow shelf where my side surround has to be placed on. So that's why I went with these. And I see that they already have the wall bracket installed onto the speaker itself, which is handy for those of you that would be putting it on the wall. All right, so here's the back, just you got your binding posts. This is probably where the crossover is. And then on the front, they're a nice solid speaker, even though they're shallow. So you got, there you are. As it's now apparent from the unboxing, I'm using the Legacy Audio Pixel on-wall speaker in a satin black finish. And the reason I chose those is because I have a ledge that's about seven inches deep uh, for my right side surround. So I do need a shallow speaker to place on that ledge just so that it's not getting hit or knocked over, or at least it's a little bit more difficult for you to hit it or knock it over when you're walking past to get to my home theater seating. So these just fit the bill absolutely perfectly because they are so shallow. The speaker is made up of two drivers. Uh, Legacy Audio calls it their silver graphite woofer and it is a seven inch woofer and then you have a four inch amt uh, which is a ribbon tweeter uh, legacy is sort of known for using these amts in a lot of their high-end speakers i believe that some of their pro models and some of their home theater models do use a more a traditional style dome tweeter but in for the most part or generally speaking legacy does like to use these amts now my rear surrounds i also got in satin black so that's what we're going to unbox right now so we're gonna move on to this box here. I'm not sure how much of it you're gonna be able to see while I'm on the floor here, because I think 
that they have to go out on each end. You, you don't take them out from the top, you take them out from the sides kinda. So let's get into this box and I'll show you what I got for rear surrounds. Yeah, so these ones will slide out. Actually, it might be able to, to slide them both out. Let's check. Let's see if I just grab this. There we go. Yeah, you can slide them both out. They are boxed together, so you don't have to do them individually. That's nice. So these are packaged very well also. Got a nice thick piece of styrofoam on the top and bottom. And then they're in this nice uh, soft bag. So let's get one of them out here. Just put it like so. Hopefully you can still see this on camera. Oh, so, uh, okay, so the bottom is gloss actually. Kind of glossy anyway. And then the rest is satin black. Oh, you'll have to excuse me guys, I am pretty pooped. Like I said, I've moved these twice and now I'm unboxing them and I'm not uh, as in good a shape as I used to be. But this is a Studio HD, there's the back. So on the back, there is a switch to increase or decrease treble and increase and decrease bass right beside the, uh, the binding posts. And again, we have peg and grommet grill, which I would prefer magnetic. You guys know me, I like my magnetic, but the finish on this looks really nice. Looks like they did a really good job this time. But as you can see, the bottom is gloss. Not sure if that picks up on camera. Try and get some glare on there. And then the rest is satin. But then you have an eight inch woofer and a one inch AMT tweeter. And these are going to be my rear surrounds. There you have it guys, there's the Studio HDs in satin black. Let's move on to the center channel. Okay, so what we got here is magnetic grills. For some reason, uh, which I like, I like magnetic grills, but the rest of the speakers are all peg and grommet but the center channel, the Marquee XD, is magnetic. So it's kind of kind of weird that they don't just go with magnetic for all of them, but it is what it is. I hardly use the grills anyway, to be honest, in all fairness, so. But there you have a diamond shape magnetic grill. One for each of the 12 inch woofers. Because this is a beastly center channel. It might be better if I just flip it and pull the box off. That's probably the best bet here. Cause it's a hundred, I believe it's basically a hundred pounds even. And me trying to lift that out of the box won't be fun. I've had my fair share of lifting today. I'm gonna try and take it a little easier. I'm already pretty pooped. But nothing's gonna stop me from unboxing these things. except for maybe some cardboard apparently. This is turning out to be a bit more of a challenge than I thought. As soon as I let go, there we go. Now that we have the box out of the way, this is the back here. Get this off. And this one guys, I did not get in satin black. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but I got this one in black pearl. And that's the, uh, the same color I had last time. So I'm gonna turn this towards you so you guys can see how much of a beast this thing is. Look how tall it is on its side. I believe it's 38 inches, if I remember right. Don't quote me on that. But you got two 12 inch aluminum woofers and I believe an eight inch accordion woofer and then a four inch ribbon tweeter. So it's a sealed, sealed speaker, but it's an absolute beast of a speaker. It's quite heavy. I believe it's about hundred pounds. All right, so there you have it. The Legacy Marquee XD, beastly center channel, 
This is by far my favorite center channel that I've ever heard. All right, guys, I'm pretty pooped, but I definitely need to get into these towers tonight. So I'm gonna unbox at least one of them for the camera. I'll probably just unbox the other one off camera because they're both identical, so there's no need to do them both. But uh, as you might have seen on the box, these are the Legacy Aries, and I am very, very excited to get these out of the box. Uh, I wanna point out before I unbox that, they do send you all the cables that are needed. You need some XLR cables because it does come with a processor. So they did send all the cables. I wish I had known that before because I just spent about 200 bucks on cables. So I'm gonna have to return those because they already included them in the box. And then you do get the uh, Wave Launch to uh, calibrate these speakers. I'll show you that quick. There's not much to this box. So you get the, uh, the power cable, of course, and then the processor itself. Uh, I do wish that it would look a little bit nicer. They do have a nicer version called the Wave Launch. Sorry, the Wave Let. This is the Wave Launch. But this is what comes with the uh, speakers. Uh, it does have a lot of lights. I believe that you can turn those all off. And then it comes with a software so that you can calibrate these speakers to your room uh, because they do have a powered um, base section. And then you have your XLR inputs and outputs on the back here uh, to, from your processor to this, sorry, from your AVR or Pre-Pro to this processor and then these go out to the speakers and out to your amplifier. So this is the uh, the Wave Launch processor that comes with the Aries speakers, which uh, I'm sure I'm gonna cover that more in an upcoming video once I get them set up. This is just to unbox and show you guys these speakers because I'm impatient and I wanna see them. <clears throat> All right, so let's get uh, one of these monstrous towers unboxed. I'm hoping I got it kind of facing the right way here. They use so many staples in these though, it's hard to... Which is a good thing, it's a very well protected package for sure. All right, so once you have this cut open, you can see the speakers very nicely packaged here with lots of space around it, but you kind of have to slide it out of the box I guess I could place it on its side. Uh, I'm just not sure if it's designed, if the packaging is made to withstand that. I'm not sure where the drivers are here. I don't wanna put it on top of a driver. All right, so I'm gonna try and slide it out from the bottom. And then if that doesn't work, I might have to try and get some help here. All right, somewhat successful uh, sliding it out. It isn't light guys. I don't know if you can see, but I'm sweating of an unboxing and moving speakers all day long. But I was successful in sliding it out. Now that it's farther out, I can get a bit of a handle on it here and get it out of the box. All right guys, so this is the Legacy Audio Aries in rosewood. A nice reddish kind of wood on the sides, back, top. And then the bottom plinth is also black pearl. And then the front baffle is of course black pearl. But what a beautiful looking speaker. Now these don't come with grills. You can purchase a grill, a magnetic grill separately. I never use the grills anyway, so I didn't bother. But just a quick rundown of what we got here. This is actually a dipole um, open baffle mid-range mid section. So this side here, I can turn this. You can see you got some uh, acoustically transparent material. That's because it is open baffle for the mid-range. Then you have some more on the top here, which you can't see. And then on the back as well. And there's actually a pretty cool feature that you can light up the crossover, which I'm sure I'll show yet. But then on the front, you have a 10 inch, um, it's a four and a half way speaker, by the way. It's a sealed configuration with a 10 inch passive radiator on the bottom. Uh, the only thing that's open, of course, is the baffle, like I said, open baffle mid range. But the base section is sealed with a 10 inch passive radiator, 10 inch mid range, a four inch mid tweeter, and then a one inch super tweeter. And I believe, again, don't quote me on this, this is a, an eight inch titanium crusted mid range woofer. I want to say, again, don't quote me. 
And then you got two powered 12 inch uh, base drivers on the bottom. One of the reasons I wanted to make this video uh, and show you guys the unboxing to show you what I've chosen for my reference speaker is so that I can explain to you why I chose these speakers over all the other speakers that I've heard or all the other speakers that I could have chosen. Some of the other speakers that I was considering for my reference speakers uh, were the Paradigm Persona speakers. I had considered the 9H. Uh, towers for my left and right and then of course the persona center speaker and then the persona bookshelves for my rears I wasn't sure what I was going to use for my side surrounds because persona does not make a nice shallow speaker that I could use on my ledge like the legacy audio uh, pixel on wall speaker so that was one of the reasons that I decided not to go with uh, the paradigm speakers uh, one of the other reasons I decided to go with legacy over paradigm is I actually prefer the look of the Aries speakers over the 9h not that the 9h is not a beautiful looking speaker I just personally prefer the look of the legacy audio airy speaker over the 9h the other brand that I was considering for my seven base layer speakers was JTR so I was considering going with their 212 towers and then their 212 center and then probably their 110s for my side surrounds and then my rear surrounds as well for those of you that are familiar with my channel you know that looks are important to me I mean, obviously sound is very important to me as well for with a speaker, but looks is also very important. I wouldn't say it's on par with sound, but it's awfully close for me personally because my speakers are out in the open. They are able to be seen. I can't hide them behind an acoustically transparent screen. And that's not to say that JTR speakers are ugly or unsightly. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not trying to insult them here. Uh, they are built to be a utilitarian speaker, the texture or the finish on them is there for a purpose to help uh, with light reflection and whatnot for a home theater, but they aren't really designed, and I don't think you can really argue this, they aren't really designed to be a beautiful looking or a unique, uh, or almost artistic styled speaker. Whereas on the other hand, legacy audio, I think clearly it's, there, there's no argument here that they are going for a beautiful look. They're going for an aesthetically pleasing looking speaker but they also sound amazing as well. And that's again, not to say that JTR doesn't sound amazing because they absolutely do. I've heard uh, a full, pretty much full JTR setup uh, in Ontario. My buddy John has a JTR setup and I've heard them. They sound amazing, they sound fantastic. But again, I want the sounds and I want the looks. So I think I made a good decision with Legacy Audio. They, they sound absolutely phenomenal. And in my opinion, the Legacy Airy speakers is one of the best looking speakers on the planet. Now I know that there's some of you out there thinking, well, I thought you said that the Paradigm Founder 120H speakers is one of your favorite looking speakers of all time. And I did say that and I still do mean it. It's definitely up there as one of my top uh, best looking speakers of all time. But in, for me personally, at least in my opinion, the Legacy Audio Airy speaker is one of the most beautiful looking speakers on the planet. There's very few that I would consider to be better looking. And of course, that's going to be personal preference. It's subjective. But for me personally, I've always loved the look of the Airy speaker. It just is phenomenal. It has some nice lines. It has some nice angles to it. Um, the, the crossover lights up, which, you know, I'm kind of a sucker for RGB. I wish it was RGB. It's only the B. Uh, it only lights up in blue. But I still think that that's a very cool, modern touch that the uh, crossover kind of glows. And it's not overbearing. It's not over bright. Uh, it's just a nice added touch, in my opinion. And then you have a nice rosewood finish on the sides, back and top. And then you have, uh, or at least in my my speakers here I chose to have black pearl for the front baffle and then the plinth on the bottom is also black pearl so when you're looking at them from the front they've got this nice metallic black look to them and then if you just kind of change your angle a little bit you have that contrast of um, you know black shiny pearl with a beautiful rosewood on the sides and I just feel like it's a beautiful combination for this speaker and it just is very aesthetically pleasing for me and that's why I was so excited for these speakers because it's one of my favorite looking speakers of all time. I of course expected them to sound as amazing as they looked and we'll get into that in future videos. I need to fine tune them. I need to get them tuned for my room. I know there's going to be a lot of you out there that at least want to know my first impressions on the sounds so I don't want to leave you guys hanging. Uh, I, I did of course get them all hooked up. I haven't uh, run room calibration yet. I've kind of just got them set up. I wanted to hear how they sounded on their own before calibrating everything. And that goes for the Aries as well. And I'm kind of getting them fine tuned. I do have a little bit more work to do, but that's the fantastic thing about the wave launch processor is that you can 
tune these speakers to how you want them. If you want to bump up high end, you can bump up the high end. If you want to bump up low end, you can bump up the low end. If you want something that's neutral, you can make them neutral. And that is the fantastic thing about these speakers. And it's another reason why I chose them is because you can make those adjustments and you can get the sound that you want out of these speakers. It's not a speaker that you just kind of plug in and hope that your room calibration does a good job on. It's a speaker that you can go in on the wave launch processor itself and fine tune them before you even run calibration. So my first impressions on the sound quality, uh, as you guys know, I've owned Legacy in the past already. So the, the Marquee XD center channel speaker is one of my favorite center channel speakers of all time. And that's because it is just so clean and clear. Even at low volumes, you can hear dialogue absolutely crystal clear. Uh, it's like nothing else that I've ever heard, which is, again, another reason why I went with Legacy Audio is because that center speaker is in and of itself kind of just blew me away with how detailed it could be and then of course you have the dual 12 inch drivers and you have a nice hefty mid-range driver as well so the sound of that that speaker is just phenomenal and and clean and detailed moving along to my first impressions on how the airy sound uh they are every bit if not more detailed and clear than the focus sd towers i owned in the past or the marquee xd center channel the information that they pull out of music and movies is just absolutely incredible there's so much detail there that i don't want to say you can't necessarily hear it with other speakers or that i didn't hear it with other speakers but it's at a whole different level uh with the aries every sound is just its own sound it's so separated it's so it's it's hard to put into words there's just just no muffled sounds together where yeah okay i can hear it but it's not as clean or as clear or as separated from this sound over here the aries uh, so far have just blown me away with that amount of detail and detail retrieval from from the source material that they're being fed uh, now that being said they are a very revealing speaker so if you are listening to something that is you know recorded very poorly you're going to hear that with these speakers these are not a speaker that are going to kind of smooth things over for you but i guess to put it simply so far my first impressions is that the the detail retrieval the sound separation the clarity and the cleanness of these speakers is just off the charts there's nothing i've ever heard like it they're just amazing when it comes to giving you that detail in those recordings and that's the excellent thing about uh, the speakers that i've chosen that are all using an amt the amount of detail that you hear even from my side surrounds and my rear surrounds when i'm playing like dolby demos like dolby amaze or uh, dolby leaf or even just playing some some movie demos like every sound is just so much more detailed it's so much more uh, prevalent or prominent you can hear it so much easier because it's effortless for these speakers to produce that detail and that is just something that sets these speakers apart from a lot of the speakers i've heard in the past that um you know they are able to make things sound good but they're not able to provide you this much audio information that is in the recording as the legacy audio speakers are able to to provide to you so that's kind of my first impression i don't want to go into more detail because I've, I've only listened to these for several hours and kind of been working on tweaking and tuning and again i haven't even done room calibration but first impression guys very very happy with the sound to say the least and i'm very very happy with the finish on all of these speakers the finish is absolutely amazing even just the, the plain satin black speakers um, i like that they have a little bit of of shine to them there's a little bit of a metallic look to the satin speakers not uh, overbearing so that it's going to be glary or anything like that but i do like that it's not just a plain matte black i do like there's a little bit of character built into the satin finish with a little bit of sparkle and the finish on the airy speakers is absolutely amazing as well the i can't find a single flaw anywhere uh, when it comes to the finish the black pearl is very well done the high gloss on the black pearl is just seems to be perfect i haven't seen any anything uh, other than perfection in the finish on the black pearl and of course the rosewood same thing uh, and i again do love the contrast between the black pearl and the rosewood just absolutely beautiful speaker and the same thing goes for the marquee xd the finish on it seems to be absolutely perfect the clear coat is just very well done it's nice and gloss is exactly how i wanted it of course if you don't want that you can get them in a satin finish but for me personally i wanted that nice gloss black pearl 
and they did an absolutely exceptional job on the finish. So far, I am very happy with my choice of reference speakers. The sound and the finish is just everything I expected and more. I'm very excited to get them all calibrated because it's only going to get better from here when it comes to the sound, which I'm very excited for. So I just want to thank you all for being there, you know, joining me on this journey, uh, seeing me through to what I feel is my end game for now. I'm never going to say never, of course. That doesn't mean I'm never going to upgrade, but I do feel this is my end game for now. So thank you for joining me on this journey. Thank you for always watching. Thank you for subscribing. I'm also looking forward to providing you guys a more detailed, accurate review. Now that I have a system that is referenced and it's going to be very revealing, it should help me draw from that baseline of information to give you a more detailed uh, description of what I'm hearing with uh, future equipment that I review, whether it's speakers, processors, amplifiers, or whatever, having a, a system that's going to be this revealing should help me provide you guys better information. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well. Looking forward to future reviews and just thank you all for sticking around and uh, joining me on my journey. Remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.